Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 27, 2019, and it's the eve of Thanksgiving today. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving Day already. Yeah. Oh, hello, Tito Erwin. Tito Erwin's on the call this morning. You're back in the you're back in the U.S. now, or you're still in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, so today we are reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 21, verses 12 to 19. So, Eva, Eva, listen up, Eva. Oh, boy. Okay, Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors <clears throat> because of my name. <clears throat> it will lead you, it will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, <clears throat> for I myself shall give you the wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. Very hard words, my Lord, this morning for us to to uh, consider, right? He is telling us in a different way now what he said in other parts of the gospel where he said, no servant is above his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Okay, so here he is saying it in a different way, in perhaps a more graphic way, by saying, oh, God bless you, by saying, very concretely, that some of you will be handed over to the synagogues, to prison, to death. But what does he say? <clears throat> you will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. Gets me to thinking, this persecution is happening up to now, okay? And we have ourselves and our families experience of this ourselves in our very own parish. Okay? In our own, in our very own parish, with the way we have been advocating about uh, how to respect the Eucharist more with the way we have been fighting uh, for the uh, celebration of Mass and the liturgy in a more solemn way, in a more dignified way, according to the traditions of the Church, by the way, not because we're trying to invent any new traditions. Well, what have we earned? <clears throat> what have we earned? Exactly what our Lord is talking about here, persecution. Saint Jose Maria Escriba once said that, you know, many times the persecution comes from good people. And he, he even gave a name to it, the persecution of the good, from the good. And, uh, well, what does our Lord say? Well, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll give you the wisdom to speak when you need to speak. And you just have to keep at it and persevere because it is by your perseverance that you will secure your life. What life is he talking about? What kind of life is he talking about here? Of course, our Lord is referring to eternal life. Right? Our perseverance in showing uh, our determination to defend the honor of our God, the honor of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Our perseverance in speaking the truth to people, 
our perseverance in living our lives as a testimony of our faith. By doing all that, we will secure our eternal salvation. We will secure our eternal life. And I think we have to keep this very much in mind because sometimes we can get easily discouraged. Imagine your own friends turning against you, which is what uh, we seem to have experienced in our very own uh, parish here. People who we thought were of the same thinking, people who we thought would be supportive of the good traditions of the church that we are trying to promote, we never imagined will be the first ones to cause the persecution. But these are good people. Good people. We wouldn't be friends with them if they weren't good. But I guess our Lord wants us to suffer a little bit. Our Lord wants to test our resolve. Our Lord wants to test our faith by allowing such persecutions to come from people we didn't even expect. But our Lord said it here, right? You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. How prophetic. I mean, how prophetic, how much more prophetic can this be, right? When this is exactly what we are experiencing now. But hey, we are not to be discouraged. And we are not discouraged. In fact, the more we think about it, the more you think about it, and in the spirit of Thanksgiving, you know, tomorrow's Thanksgiving Day, we actually have to give thanks for all of this persecution. Okay? That might be a little ironic, right? Give thanks. You're being persecuted and you're thankful for it. You must be out of your minds, right? We must be out of our minds to be thankful for the persecution. But there is spiritual benefit for being thankful for persecution. Our Lord himself said, pray for those who persecute you. Right? Pray for them. And that's what we've been doing. But on our end, we have to take on this persecution with joy. With joy. Why? We have to be grateful that our Lord is giving us a piece of the cross. No servant is above his master. If they will persecute, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So we have to be thankful that our Lord has deigned us worthy, worthy to suffer with him, worthy to take up part of the cross, worthy to give an expression of our confirmation and baptismal uh, calling to be children of God, as apostles of God, soldiers of God, to fight for his cause and to lend testimony. It will lead you to give testimony, as our Lord said. And here we are trying to give testimony for the truths that we do not own. These are truths that have been handed down to us for our own benefit and for us to spread to other people. We are only instruments of God. We are unprofitable servants, as we had read in the gospel uh, um, a week ago or so. We are just unprofitable servants. We're just doing what we are expected to do. And we are doing it. And the fact that we're doing it, we should be happy doing it. And we should be grateful that God is allowing us to suffer and go through some form of persecution for his name's sake. And so in the spirit of thanksgiving, my children, in the spirit of thanksgiving, let us take these kinds of persecutions with a smile. 
with joy in our hearts. There is no reason for us to get discouraged. There's no reason for us to hate anybody. There's no reason for us to feel deprived of anything. If at all, <laughs> if at all, the persecution we had just suffered from our, the hands of these good people have in fact brought us to a better place, have in fact uh, 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 contributed to us finding a better place for our own uh, formation, for our own growth, for our own spiritual benefit. Right? So we actually have to be grateful because could you imagine God uses certain apparently um, bad situations to bring about something good. And that is the, that's the way God always operates. Right? He always uses something that may apparently be bad to bring out something good. Because that is what God is for. He always brings about something good for us. If, if we persevere, if we serve His cause and His, and his uh, kingdom, if we do our part, Okay? If we do our part. And if we are motivated by only one thing. Which is? Heaven. Okay? Sanctity. Okay? That's our only motivation. To become saints. And so we are willing to take up our cross. Take up our cross. And follow our Lord. In this path of sacrifice. In this path of persecution. In this path of glory. Because at the end of all persecution is glory. The glory that we await that awaits us in heaven. And that we that we strive for. Okay? The glory that we strive for in heaven. So to wrap up tomorrow's Thanksgiving Day, let us spend maybe today, you know, I've been asking you what are you grateful for, right? The whole week. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, we have to get come to that list, right? What are the things we've been grateful for and, uh, and uh, we will be grateful for? Okay, well, one of the things we can think about today as we prepare for Thanksgiving tomorrow is perhaps to think about those times of persecution, those times of hardship, those times of difficulty that has later on turned out to be for the good. So what are those things? Do you have a list of those things that are tough, challenging uh, uh, situations, situations of persecution in your own lives, among your own friends and family and relatives. Do you have those? Well, today's a good day to give thanks for those. Because, because our Lord would turn those things into something good for each and every one of our souls. Okay, that's it for us. <clears throat> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe a little later because Mass is going to be a little later uh, in the morning. And maybe we're also going to have a, a slower morning. But anyway, happy Thanksgiving to all of you, to all your families. And I hope that uh, tomorrow is an occasion to bring the family together and have fun with everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.